Welcome back to Stooge Dream. I'm your host, The Stooge. This is a WCPW recap. I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, the knockout Fiona. Welcome. This is episode eight of Loaded, and let's get right into it. So the opening of the show was a promo by Joe Hendry talking about how he'd lost the uh, heavyweight title to Joseph Connors and he's eventually going to get revenge on Joseph Connors. But tonight he needs to concentrate on the rumble. He's Joe Hendry. He's awesome. Mm. And that's a great way to open the show. The uh, Kurt, in Kurt Angle Invitational Rumble, in fact. Let's call it by its full name. Well, thank you. And what a way to open a show with Joe Hendry. Yeah, any time you open a show with Joe Hendry, it's going to be a good show. He might have been lamenting a, a significant um, loss or defeat at the heel turn of his once friend. Were they friends, though? Or did he just kind of force himself upon Joseph Connors? A little bit of mm. column A, a little bit of column B. Mm. So that leads to the first um, part of the show where Joseph Connors comes out to the ring with his new title, cuts a promo and says why he did what he did. If you were a long-time listener of the show, or short time, because we've only been around for a few weeks at this point, you would have heard me mention that I'm looking forward to the Joseph Connors heel turn for him to go back to his indie character of the righteous Joseph Connors, and that's kind of where he's headed, and I'm really happy with that. He suits being a heel a lot more than the sidekick or an uncomfortable face. And he cut a really good heel promo on why he did what he did because he wanted the title and so on and opens an issue challenge, uh, sorry, an open challenge to anyone on the roster that wants a shot at the title. And it's answered by the Mexican sensation from Los Santos, Mexico, El Liguero himself. El Liguero. I was waiting for that. Um, no, I really loved Joseph, uh, Joseph Connor's promo. Um, it felt a little bit, not quite shoot, but you know, he, he went pretty serious. He didn't go the full bitchy, um, I'm better than everyone heel. It was, you know, I, the crowd chant at one point, you deserve it. The crowd were half behind him. Yeah. I was like, that's right. I do deserve it. So yeah, it's good. I'm glad they put it on a local guy. One of the sort of, you know, he's not massive either, but he's in immaculate shape and he's fit and he's obviously a worker and performer. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next. Definitely. And a couple of spots from the match itself. Um, El Aguero tried a crowd spot, but took too long to move into position. So Connors had to throw him into the crowd and they went over, did the whole bit. And then Connors threw him into a bunch of chairs. It's just not necessary. Um, also the El Aguero somersault off that barrier into the crowd onto Joseph Connors. It's look, I get it. It looks great. But someone's going to get hurt. Um, and it's not necessary to put the guys over. Like Now, this was before the match started, Ricky, because we were wondering where the count was. We hadn't realized they hadn't rung the bell yet. So all these crowd spots happened first and foremost. And yes, yeah, sorry to be the nanny state on this show, but guys, your insurance. <laughs> and they just don't seem to manage it very well. Like uh... I thought it was a little bit better this time okay. around with a uh, couple of the refs appearing out of nowhere to push the crowd out of the oh, way. Good. Yeah. But even in saying that, that, these spots aren't necessary. Like, if you're trying to be a big promotion, you notice that, like, and we're going to um, use the name of the devil here, but WWE doesn't do stuff like that because they're worried about their fans, the crowd, mm -hmm. the insurance, and getting sued. And you should be as well. But they're not wrestling, though. Yeah, true. It's sports have to go entertainment. On the record. And <laughs> we we see the clear distinction between sports entertainment and wrestling in this household. But I, I would like to also say, Rick, did you did you say um, that uh, Connor's corrected El Liguero or just fixed a couple of spots there? Yeah, there was a spot that he fixed. That... I never pick up on these things. I watch wrestling much more like a mark, whereas you're much more cunning and understand the moves and what they're going for and the... The story arcs, yeah. Yeah. It's quite interesting how we both perceive the product in this place. Yeah. Now, as part of the story arc, actually, uh, Connors hits the ref from behind and knocks him down in the matches to show how much of a heel he really oh, is right. now. yeah. That was a good little spot. It was well done. Um, and Connors wins a match which, with the Righteous Kill um, DDT, which is a tight package DDT that looks really, really brutal. Mm. It, it looks like a really nasty finisher. And Aguero was selling the uh, neck tenderness 
well into the Invitational Rumble. Yeah. So that was really well done. And of course, Connors goes over. He's going to hold the title until uh, Joe Hendry takes it from him. I'm thinking probably in about six weeks' time um, after the Kurt Angle uh, eye pay per view with to Cody. Lose. Yep. After all that, then he'll come back to the title. And in the meantime, they need to build up Joseph Connors as a dirty heel. Yeah, and, and a legitimate um, yeah. main event um, world champion as well. Which leads me to believe that Kurt Angle's put in over Joe Hendry. Really? I was thinking about it on the train just now, and I don't think so. I think he'll come so close. Angle will get the win, but he'll, you know, congratulate him, hold him up. He might get on the mic we'll and see, say, we'll see. you know get into the real wrestling real wrestlers can be pro wrestlers i don't know uh, we'll see mm. all right predictions to you people yeah next up prince armin cuts a promo about the kurt angle invitational and how awesome it is that he's been invited to find out that he isn't invited gabriel kidd is invited his manservant by kurt angle which upsets him a little bit as you can imagine this leads to the next promo segment which is james r kennedy coming out to the ring to introduce his new tag team because Prospect is still suspended and can't come into the building. So he's gone all the way to Mexico to find himself a brand new team. Lost Perspectiva, which is just Prospect in Lucha Libre masks. <laughs> this is just before a match with Prince Armin, Gabriel Kidd versus Lost Perspectiva. Yeah, I love Kennedy as a heel manager. I really, I really um, think the Brits do managers in wrestling really well. I think that from what I've seen bits and bobs of, they yeah, they've got that character down pat and that how it plays into the how it plays into the whole story arc of wrestling. Yeah, I think he's really good at what he does, and also the comedy angles that they're running on WCPW like. Um, you know, the uh, Prince and BX and, and all of that, yeah. trying to get into the building last week and so on. Prince I mean and Kid and uh, even Martin Kirby earlier on in the piece until now they've turned him a little bit serious, but he still does have his comedy spots. Um, I think they handle it really well. They handle it in a way where the wrestling part is still serious. So it's not a two-minute squash match mm. that makes the whole angle absolutely useless. Yeah. It's you have this comedy character of Martin Kirby at the beginning, for instance, but he's still doing 15, 20-minute matches that look amazing. Yeah. So that's where the character holds up. So they do that really well. Mm. Um, and this is a great match as well. But, you know, Prospect are really good. Gabriel Kidd and Prince Armin is really good. So they, they all put on a really nice match until... James R. Kennedy interrupted the match to talk to Prince Armin to ask him to sacrifice Gabriel Kidd to his new tag team because they need a win because this is their first time in England. Lost Perspectiva. <laughs> so Prince Armin forces Gabriel Kidd to lie down for Lost Perspectiva, which again, building up as part of the story arc of the Gabriel Kidd Prince Armin thing works really well. Mm. It got a little bit drawn out, but there, there are only three matches on this card, so I understand. Yeah. But no, I like the story angle that they're running, and I oh, can't wait too. for Gabriel Kidd to break free of yeah, Prince Armin. Yeah, totally. And can I just point out the most important uh, detail of this match, Ricky? Both Prince Armin and Gabriel Kidd were wearing King Ross shirts. Do you think that was like a royal gift from a, a king to a prince? Because I know those shirts are hard to get, and they keep selling out. <laughs> So was it like a royal, you know, a meeting of a prince and a king and a, a state meeting and that was a gift? I think there's just um, battle lines within the roster of WCPW um, to the what culture um, sex, as it were, you know. Yeah. The... So what you're saying is Prince Armin and Gabriel Kidd are sick guys. You betcha. All right, so this leads us to the last match on the card. That's right, there was only three matches on this card. But this last one is massive. It's the 15-man Kurt Angle Invitational Rumble. The storyline goes that Kurt Angle has picked these 15 men himself. Mm. And the winner gets to face Kurt Angle at the iPay-Per-View coming up. So, first two in. Kirby and El Ligero. And to open... Um, Pachiti comes out and cuts a thing about, you know, this is going to be for the person that faces Kurt Angle. And our first person is, looks down at this piece of paper and goes, oh no, 
Martin Kirby. So I like the little story arc that they've got going as well. Like mm. they've rubbed each other the wrong way and they don't get along and stuff. And yeah, I like that. But Kirby and Elagero to open it up. Great choice. Um, they're both great performers. Um, Kirby puts on an amazing show. Elagero was selling his injuries from the match earlier in the night. Kirby and the 14 other dickheads that were yeah. coming through. That was a, and the promo sections leading into the Rumble were quite good as well with them asking each of the people that are going to be in the Rumble, you know, how do you feel? Or our primate just spits blood and walks away and EC3 just stands there and goes, I've beat Kurt Angle for a world title. <laughs> so yes. what do you think about the Rumble tonight? I have beat Kurt Angle for a world title. <laughs> and then just says it over and over, which I thought was cute. That was good. Like it's... Yeah, um, and obviously the Joe Hendry one of the beer. Everyone got a shot at getting themselves over on the microphone. And Kirby it, uh, was by far my favourite. Him just going, me and 14 other dickheads. It's like, that's brilliant. Mm. It's brilliant. So they start off. Travis Banks comes in at number three. Um, the villain Marty Skrull comes in at number four. The emo Drew Galloway comes in at number five. Now these guys have some really good chemistry in the ring mm. um and it was a really fun entertaining match like it, they really know how to work together for people that probably haven't worked together all that much they did a great job of hiding that and just like some great spots and some heavy hits and galloway hit um muddy skull with the cra uh, the claymore was it did he hit him or hit someone with a claymore really early on and just a whole lot happening constantly yeah, um, they also uh, continued a little storyline between Kirby and Travis Banks. And that's by Martin Kirby uh, eliminating Travis Banks first, Travis Banks rolling back into the ring and eliminating Martin Kirby. So clearly that established very early on, there's no rules here. <laughs> Come on, ref. <laughs> Ref's blind. This is a member of the Hebner family, like a long lost <laughs> English cousin. Third cousin, yeah. <laughs> he couldn't see anything, didn't know what was happening. Unless yeah. someone's feet hit the mat or you were pinned or submitted, the ref was blind ass. But as soon as that was happening, he was dead on it. Your feet hit the mat, you're out. But that was the dude that had been it. You're out. I didn't see it. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot happened even very early on in the Rumble. Like, I. They really, I think they paced it. I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but they, I think they paced it really well. There was, uh, yeah, little arcs happening between different wrestlers. Um, there were surprises, but let's keep going and we'll talk more. Well, speaking of the, the next arc, Gabriel mm. Kidd is the next one in. Yep. Gets to the ring, gets into the ring, gets a pop from the crowd, and then Prince Armin comes down and goes, you out, I'm your boss, I'm taking your spot. I don't care what you want. Well, uh, and the crowd boos the hell out of Prince Armin. Contractually obliged to do what I say, so I'm getting in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was a good little spot as well. And that really mm. it starts building, well, continues to build the animosity between Gabriel Kidd and Prince Armin really well. Next in, we had Joe Coffey. And Joe Coffey proceeded to immediately smash and pin Prince Armin. Yeah. So that was come up and straight away it was like a nice little feeling for the crowd nice little thing for um gabriel kid as well and it established the fact that you could pin submit or throw people over the top ropes in this match and it being a unique rumble in that regard exactly yeah i think they do a great job with it uh next in uh no sorry next was drew galloway eliminated by marty skull now that was a shocker for me that drew went out so early i figured he'd be one of the last people yeah. in but I think it was also good that WCPW had one of their new stars. Like Marty Skrull is by far a big name in the industry. He's mm. not been made by WCPW by any stretch of the imagination. But he's new on their roster. So to get him over with their fans, he put out somebody huge on the international mm. scene pretty early on. That was really cool. And Drew doesn't need it. Not at all. Yeah. Okay, next in uh, was Pete Dunn. Yeah, another new guy. Another new um, I like new him. offering. Yeah. yeah, I like his character. I like that he's going for that old school style of British wrestling and that look and feel and stuff. I like it. Um, now, this was a, a shocker to me because as 
just before this happened, we were discussing who do you think is going to win the match, and I said, I think there's a good chance that Marty Skrull could be in the last couple, and there's a good chance he may win. And he was immediately eliminated as I finished that match. I uh, finished that sentence, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, Marty Skrull, out. Eliminated by Pete Dunn. There you go. Mm. Uh, next in... Yeah, we, that was a surprise. That sorry. was yeah. just a shocker, yeah. but that's putting Pete Dunn over, so I get mm. it. Uh, next in... We had Doug Williams. This was a great little cute section as well, where he comes in with a chair and uh, the Daily Mail <laughs> and sits down and starts reading the Daily Mail. He's like, see, I'm smart. I'm going to just pick off the bones. And he's reading the paper. I thought he brought them in as weapons at first. I was like, so did I. newspaper? Oh, but then, yes, you so pointed then, out what he was doing. Yeah. So then El Ligero comes out and does some spots with him in the mm. paper and stuff and steals his yeah. paper. And, well, they did use it as a weapon. <laughs> yeah, and then he ends up using it as a weapon. And yeah, it was really cute. And that's how they got Doug Williams into the match. And so it was a really good, cute little segment that I thought worked really well. Yes. Next in, the local hero, Joe Hendry. And... Can I just say, and I'm not just saying this, it wasn't until Henry Hendry came in at number 10 that I said to you, he's going to win. Yeah. He has to win. It has to be Joe Hendry. You did. You did. There's no one else that could win now. Yeah. Um, and he came into a Final Fantasy VII video this time, which was pretty damn cool about being backstabbed by Joseph Connors at the Sethrath part of Final Fantasy VII. All right, um, next in was Rampage. Mm. Rampage came in and cut a literal rampage. Like, he went mental. <laughs> he cleaned up, cleaned it, it out. He's very hard-hitting style. Mm. Like, you can see he's very influenced by the Japanese style yeah. of wrestling. And he does hit hard. Like, he doesn't hit so hard he's going to hurt someone, but he hits hard enough to make it look like he hurt someone. And him just cutting a swath through the entire, what, seven or so people that were still in the mm. match at that point. Yeah, it just shows how powerful of a man, like, he is and a character they're trying to put over. Mm. No, I like Rampage. I'm enjoying everything he does. I want more. And just to, again, show exactly who Rampage is, he immediately pins Pete Dunne after he smashes six other men. Oh, right. I missed that. Yeah. Damn rumbles. Too much going on. All right. So next in, we were all looking for it. No, 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 no. Before that, we had Moose. Moose. Oh, well. Moose. Was he in though or? (laughs) So before we get to that though. He came out from Gorilla. He's having such a good time. He came out with a big ass smile on his face. smile is so cute. He was like doing a little jig and then did his moose, moose. He's loving being in WCPW and he has a match next week too. Excellent. Um, But Moose immediately gets attacked from behind by Big Demo and Los Prospectiva. (laughs) And yeah, and he he just made it out from gorilla position and then got dragged back in by them. Dropped and kidnapped by them, taken to the back and never to be seen again. But Moose is going to get his revenge. Is this a Moose and Big Demo match? Um, no. Who is Moose? I think Rampage is facing Big Demo possibly, and Moose oh, right. is facing Rampage and, someone. And Big Demo still have their grudge match. Yeah. Yeah. Can I start seeing trouble now? No, no, because oh. we're not there yet. Because Big Demo and Prospect mm. attack Rampage in the ring and eliminate him again. Blinder shit ref can't tell that Big Demo and Prospect are not in the match. They're not legitimate entrants. Mm. So Prospect, Big Demo, all go through the crowd on the way out. Okay, so they're really um, building up to that match. Yeah. yeah, but it's Rampage beating the hell out of all three of them, which was <laughs> awesome because Big Demo up to this point really hasn't been knocked down too much. So seeing him get just slapped around by Rampage was cool. Excellent. Yeah. Now sing. Trouble, 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 trouble. Yep, EC3 is in. <laughs> Um, so things start happening really quickly here. So EC3 comes in, Mm. um, a new young gentleman that I'm very impressed with as well. Liam Slater comes in straight after EC3. Um, El Ligero is eliminated. I can't remember who he was eliminated by. Do you have that there? Um, El Ligero was eliminated by EC3. By EC3. That's right. Yeah. 
uh, Primate came in and did some massive damage to everyone doing his I'm a Psycho. Liam Slater is KO'd by Primate with that choke pin with the elbows to the head. Yeah. Which is just psychotic looking. They call it here officially stoppage, as in... Yeah, the, like it's TKO. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hendry, freak of nature's primate over the top rope, which was awesome. Um, so this is where all of a sudden things just pick up quick, sorry. So Coffee is pinned by primate straight after primate TKO is Liam Slater. So we get Liam Slater out. Iron Man Joe Coffee goes out straight away pinned by primate. Straight after that, Hendry loses his shit. Joe Hendry goes mental and just starts beating the crap out of everyone. So he freaks of nature, primate over the top rope. He pins Doug Williams and then throws EC3 over the top ropes as well to win the match. And we know he's going to face Kurt Angle at the iPay-Per-View coming up really shortly in October. 6th of October. 6th of October. I've got it on the calendar. Yeah, we can't wait. We're looking forward to it. We're going to be paying for it. <laughs> for once. <laughs> now, months ago, or a month or so ago, no, it's, it's been like two months ago when they said that Kurt Angle was coming to WCPW. I said, how cool would it be if they did a story where Joe Hendry faces him because Joe Hendry's going to be in the Commonwealth Games for amateur wrestling. Of course, we know that Kurt Angle won an Olympic gold medal for amateur wrestling with a broken neck. So, you know, the Commonwealth Games amateur wrestler versus the Olympic amateur wrestler. That'd be a cool story arc. They're doing that. I'm so yeah, happy. You called it. I'm I know. so happy. So happy. We were very excited for Joe Hendry. Oh, the crowd you lost their that. collective minds. Everyone had their hands in the air, waving, doing the Joe Hendry. Mm hmm screaming you deserve it um yeah. it was a feel-good takeaway moment and that's what you need at the end of a wrestling show you either need a shock moment yep you know a big heel turn like we had in the last one with joseph connor's turning heel taking the title yes. and so on you need a feel-good moment or you need some sort of story resolution and this episode they gave us the feel-good moment um in a character that has gotten himself over like, Joe Hendry, if you really go back and break down his character from the beginning, he's kind of an asshole. In WCPW? Yeah, in WCPW. Career, yeah. He's kind of a bit of an asshole. He's kind of a bit arrogant. He's kind of kind of just got himself over anyway mm. with the character hindrances to the point where he's the uber face of the company now by default. Like, who else is their big, huge face? Rampage is just Rampage. He's not a face. Yeah, you've got Alagero, but he doesn't talk. He's a performer. He's he, a performer, yeah. Yeah. Or if you want to um, believe Broken Matt Hardy, he is a spot monkey. <laughs> 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 but no, he's an X Division style performer. Oh, he's monkey. he's not a actor per se. He's yeah. not a... So you can't, like, yeah, the crowd love him and get behind him, but who else have they got really in that position of uber face other than now than Joe Hendry yeah. who they're positioned in that place who can talk the crowd wave every time he comes in mm. he yells out his name uh, he says local hero and the crowd yells out his name like he's just so over it's crazy yep um well I don't know what else to say about that Ricky yeah. I'm... <laughs> I just good luck for your training Joe Hendry for yeah. the next month you're gonna need it but <laughs> We'll root for you. Oh, I'm really, really looking forward to that match. And all I've got to say is, Kurt Angle, if you want some, come get some. It's real. It's damn real. And that's the end of our WCPW Loaded Episode 8 recap. I hope you enjoyed that. We've got lots more coming up because WCPW is going nowhere. They're only getting bigger and bigger every week with more people coming in. I'm really looking forward to doing the recap of the iPay-Per-View because it's been um, called by two of my favorite wrestling personalities of all times, Jim Ross and Jim Cornette. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, that is going to be a long one. Like I said, put it in your calendars and we are going to have an epic recap show for that one, Ricky. It's going to be so good. That's the. I think I'm going to actually turn that way up 
and listen to the commentary because it's it's Jim Ross. I haven't heard Jim Ross call a match in years. Mm. And he'll be calling a match how he wants to call a match yeah. without someone in his ear telling him what to do. With Jim Cornette, who's probably been told, oh, yeah, by the way, we're an internet show. You can swear. So he's going to probably oh, yes. call someone a motherfucker at some point. F-bombs. F-bombs. <laughs> Love it. But we've got plenty of Loaded in the meantime. There's more this weekend. Are we going to see Alberto Del Patron or El Patron? Uh, he's debuting this weekend at tapings, but I don't think we'll see ah, him uh, for it. about a month or something. So that is the big news. Alberto Del Patron, formerly El Patron, El Patron formerly Alberto Del Rio of WWE, has signed to WCPW. He's also working in another British uh, promotion, Good. which name, uh, the name I forget now, but mm. it's Paige's parents' promotion. Ah, convenient that. There's a lot of promotions in the UK, but it seems that there seems to be a resurgence and a renaissance of British wrestling really establishing, like, on, on the scene. And just bring it on, is all I can say. Absolutely. So thank you again for listening. I'm your host, The Stooge. This is a knockout, Fiona. Uh, and that was a knockout show? I don't know. <laughs> Close enough. And we'll be back with more WCPW recap next week. He wears a tie, has money, the best in the nation. He'll beat you all and pool and play in PlayStation. If they refuse to see the pageantry, then they're just silly billies. Come on. Let's get it on Joe Henry's music Play Joe Henry's music Play Joe Henry's music Yeah I'm Joseph Connors Joe Henry's music Play Joe Henry's music Joe Henry's music Yeah He wears a tie Has money The best in the nation Will beat you all And boo And play in PlayStation If they refuse to see the Joseph Connors Joe Andrews Music Play